I am welcoming to the monthly social 11-year-old Sienna Kleiner Fisman, who is also known by friends and family as Cece, a cancer survivor from the age of three, now a grade five student. Cece has authored a book called She Warrior that inspires adults and children alike. She's here to share her courageous story with us. Cece, thank you so much for coming to have this talk with me. How are you today? Okay, how are you? I'm good. Are you uh, looking forward to summer? Yes, I'm. I I love summer. It's my favorite season, other than spring. What's your favorite thing to do in the summertime, Cece? There are so many possibilities of what you could do in the summer, because in the winter there are so many things you can't do, but you can do almost anything in the summer. Like you can go swimming. Going to summer camp, going swimming, that's what I love the most probably, Um, lemonade stands, that sort of stuff. Those are all the things I love. Summer is my favorite (laughs) too, and swimming is one of my favorite. I'm not very good at it, but it's one of my favorite things to do too. So it's exciting, isn't it? Yeah, it's very exciting. So, Cece, I'd like to congratulate you for being so strong and so brave and so courageous um, fighting cancer and now being able to share your story with us. Um, What made you decide to write your book called She Warrior? Well, one morning I woke up and I was going to, I just, I had an epiphany that I have a pretty great life and a pretty interesting story, if you ask me. So I thought I'd just jot down a few notes about it um but then my mom suggested to me why don't you write a book about the one really big thing that happened in your life i mean there there are a lot of big things but one of them which is having cancer so then i started to write down everything i remembered and then i showed it to my mom and so i came into her one into her room one morning and i said i think I'm going to write a story about my life. And the, when I was 10, I'm 11 now. And then I came back into a room a few hours later and I said, guess what, Mom? I wrote a book. So, yeah, I think that's how it started. That's how, that's how it started. Well, I'm so happy that you wrote the book. Um, I read the book. And, and like I said, it's very inspiring for me. And when I was reading your story, um your words made me feel all sorts of things. I was really angry at cancer and I was scared too. Um, My mom is a cancer survivor and it made me think of when I would go to the hospital with her and I helped her with all of her treatments. Um, Was it hard or scary for you to think back at all the different things about your cancer and your treatment when you were writing the book? I'd have to say yes a little bit because um, I had to go back and think back on leaving home to go to Philadelphia, um, right. getting needles every day, because I don't think any kid really like needles. Um, but also, I had to learn a lot more about myself than I'd ever known. So it was just shocking, a lot of it. So you learned more about yourself because you started remembering all the different things that you went through. And now you're in a different a different spot in your life, right? And I, I also asked my mom a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, Cece, when you think uh, when you think back to when you were going through your treatments and the hospitals and the people you met, your journey, what do you remember the most about those days? What sticks out in your mind? good and bad things I remember. I remember my friend coming to visit me in my hospital room. I remember, um, so there's this organization called High Lifeline. They help children with critical illnesses, like we have here in the Canada the waiting room with boys. So I remember High Lifeline coming to visit me. Um, and I also remember Well, I definitely remember going to Philadelphia because leaving home for three months, that's the thing you definitely remember. Yeah. Um, Not being able to eat every morning because I had to, um, 
they had to have um, radiation and um, if I had eaten it would have interfered so I couldn't eat every morning so a bunch of those things stuck out Wow, so many things. It's incredible that you remember all these things and and you were so young at the time too. Um, You say this, uh, Cece, you say, even though my days were filled with uncertainty and fear, with the help of my doctors, nurses, and my mom, I never lost hope. And eventually I recovered. Hope is a really big thing for a lot of people. I remember I needed to have hope for my mom and, and for other things, right? What are some of the things that helped you keep that hope so that others can recognize for themselves if, if they're going through something? Well, definitely my family. I don't know how I would have done it without them. My mom and my dad um, taking turns coming to Philadelphia to be with me, one going home to be with my the best brother and sister in the world, my brother and sister Ben and Juge, and one coming to Philadelphia for a week with me. Um, and definitely my brother and sister, because they, they they made me, when they came to the hospital, I felt like, hey, everything's going to be okay, because my sister was always giggling, and my brother would just look at me with such love in his eyes. I thought, if I have all this in my life, then what could go wrong? Wow. Family. So your family was your, your big hope. That's uh, Those are some very powerful words that you just gave everybody to consider and, and to listen to, Cece. Um, you named your cancer. You named it Toots? Yeah. Is that why did you name it that? Well, um, I I had watched this TV show, Curious George, and um, and the episode was there was this little germ in one of the guy's noses, and his name was Toots. No, sorry, his band name was Toots. He was like a little rock star, and then every time he played a chord, um, the guy would sneeze. So I thought it seemed kind of similar. Did that did naming it help you a little bit? Yeah, it made it, it well. Cancer is not funny, but it made it a little, a little laugh. Hmm. Cece, there's a part in your book where you talk about a video, thinking about some some things that you uh, made you laugh and smile, um, that your friend Kaz made you when you were going through treatment, and you say that it had your favorite song in it. Can you share with us share with us what is um your favorite what was that favorite song of yours in that video? I'm not sure who it's by, but I know um it's called Stand By Me. Um, um and it's a it's a very nice song. And that is a beautiful song. Yeah. Yeah. And Have you sorry, go ahead. And and the pictures in it were very they made me very happy because they yeah. were me and my friend Cass. Do you still play the song? Yeah. I'm going to have to find it and see if I could play it on the show for you when we air the show. Um, Cece, you uh, you didn't just write your book. You also drew the artwork that is in your book. And there's so many wonderful pictures um, that you made in different parts of the book. I really enjoyed seeing those as much as I did reading the book. Did you draw those just for the book or did you have them before you decided to do the book? I drew them just for the book because I, I, I'm going to be honest. Well, I have thought a lot of like once you have cancer, it's something that stays with you forever. So mm. I have thought about it before, but um, I, I had never drawn pictures. So I just started drawing pictures when I first was writing the book. And did you feel the pictures were almost as important as the as the words that you wrote to help each other out? Definitely, because I I have a feeling without the pictures, this book wouldn't have been me. Hmm. You like drawing? It's one of my favorite things. I like your drawings too, so I hope you don't stop. I will. So, <laughs> so Cece, you are cancer-free now, but... Um, just so everyone understands, you had a very aggressive treatment. Um, you had both chemotherapy and radiation. Yeah. Are you still battling some of the post-treatment side effects? 
Oh, yeah. Um, a lot. And there will be more. But right now, um, I have a drainage problem in my eye. So it's not as strong in my left eye because um, I think the radiation was on my left side. And um, I'm missing a few of my top adult teeth. Because when they first came in, the roots were very weak. So my doctors had to just pull them out because they did not have a chance. Um, and I have a nose problem. Wow. So you still and you'll be dealing with that for the next little while. And hopefully you can get through all of that. But that's for somebody who goes through this type of treatment. I can share with you my mom. Her voice doesn't sound the same anymore because she had radiation in, in this area and her voice is very raspy. So we know that this continues on and we just want to let people realize, have your hope, but there's always stuff that we'll, we continue to deal with, even though that it, the cancer has passed us, right? And we continue to have to be strong, right, Cece? Yeah, and I mean, these side effects won't go away, but you have to um, you have to take every day and live it to the fullest, even with challenges. I, after hearing you, I don't know how anybody can't live it to the full of CC. Um, are you planning on being an author when you grow up? And are you going to write more books? Or do you have other ideas of what you want to be? Well, I was thinking about it. But as much as I love to write, I'm thinking that may just be for a hobby. Because when I'm older, I have a few options, actually. Um, I haven't decided yet. I even want to be, I may want to be a human rights lawyer because my brother and sister have developmental disabilities and I want to be able to look out for them. Um, I might want to be a psycholog a child psychologist or maybe a child psychiatrist because I also want to go to med school, but I also want to help kids. I may want to be a teacher because I want to help kids learn um, because I really like kids like younger kids um and but I also I probably won't be but I kind of want to be a chef because I really like to cook. you like to cook wow those are so many wonderful career choices and it's so amazing that you've thought about them um oh. in so many different ways Cece actually I do have one that I definitely want to do no matter what I really when I'm older want to be the prime minister of canada i'd vote for you right now thank you <laughs> when i turn 18 <laughs> you let me know and i'm gonna come help you out because um i just think that you're a leader i think you're a natural leader and i think there's a lot of people who would want to listen to you and and would trust you and would follow you um with such a wonderful message that you put forward and and such confidence i'm so so excited to hear you talk and and to to hear all the wonderful things that you want to do with your life. So it makes me want to do more, Cece. <laughs> Thank you. It's just there are so many possibilities. Like, where do you begin? It's true. And you should never end because there are, we have so many things available to us, so many tools, so many opportunities. We should make the most of them and, and focus on all the good things that we have in our lives, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cece, um, do you have a message that you'd like to send out today? for any kids or anyone out there who might be facing a situation like yours? Well, find the silver lining in every day because I feel like it's impossible for one day to just be all bad, no good things at all. Um, yeah. And Thanks. in your spare time, write a book. Find your silver lining and in your spare time, write a book. Cece, thank you so much for sharing your story, your book, your thoughts today with us. I'm going to put a link to your uh, book that is being sold on Amazon in our interview in our interview notes. Um, is there any other place that, that we should look for your book or any other place to connect? Um, I think that's the only place right, right now. Okay, wonderful. So we will look for that. And um, and I'll uh, help get your message out, hopefully. So thank you again. That is Cece. She's a she warrior 
11 year old Sienna C.C. Kleiner Fisman, cancer survivor and author of her new book, rightly titled She Warrior. It's an inspiring story that brings hope, defines resiliency, stirs emotion, pushes you to find your own strengths in whatever challenges you may have in your life, but is also innocent, authentic, and motivating. CC is a masterful storyteller at age 11. I'll have the book in the links in the show notes, so please check those out. Thank you again, CC. Best wishes and take care. Me too.